I'd really like you to talk to um, the role of ascorbate and the difference between ascorbic acid because I know a lot of folks go into the store and, and they, they hear vitamin C, they grab vitamin C because that's what it says on the label. But that doesn't necessarily relate to what we're talking about here with the L-ascorbate. Will you share the difference there for us, please, so consumers can be aware of what they're purchasing? No, I'd be delighted. And it's a very important point because nature's L-ascorbate is the preferred form, but only about 5% of all of what is sold is nature's form. Most of it is synthetic, cheap to produce, contaminated too often, half of it excluded from the human intestine. So when you buy ascorbic acid or vitamin C from the shelf, you're getting half L and half D. The D builds up in the intestines and can be irritating. The L was produced in air and air has oxygen. And the oxygen from the air has oxidized some of the antioxidant ascorbate to di dehydroascorbate or diketobulonic acid, which are damaged forms. We don't recommend that. We want you to have 100% L-ascorbate fully buffered and fully reduced. And we recommend a combination of potassium, calcium, magnesium, and zinc, so that whether you need one, 10, or 100 grams of ascorbate, you get a balanced mineral buffer that energizes and activates and alkalinizes and is consistent with the alkaline way of living. So there's a world of difference between L-ascorbate fully buffered and fully reduced, which is what we have always used and always will, where it's done under a nitrogen blanket in the old traditional way and then triple recrystallized so you're really getting the best of the best with no fuss, no muss, because nature, nurture, and wholeness guide us in every ingredient of every formula, especially the L-ascorbate, nature's form, the protective form, the form that raises glutathione best, that protects the membrane, that raises the battery uh, energy level of the cell, uh, that activates the ATP, it activates many catalyst enzymes that are necessary in the cell, so magnesium soothes what calcium activates. And while most people are aware they have relatively too much calcium, what they're really not yet aware enough of is they have an absolute deficiency of magnesium. And so we need magnesium to activate the ascorbate. We need the ascorbate to make the magnesium more useful. It's a team. It's a synergistic approach. It's a really evidence-based approach. It's a back to the future approach because much of the knowledge, the basic molecular biochemistry has been known for decades. What we've only figured out in the last few years to decades is how to apply this in a way that promotes good health, that gets the bad stuff out, the good stuff in, in sufficient amounts for each individual. And we now know how to do that and recommend that.